so everyone welcome to a little informational session on uh, what we are calling, Sherry and I, the Lifelong Brain Health Through Nourishment and Movement Program. And we've spent a lot of time researching this specific program and putting it together for you. But we've also each spent a lot of time with Diabetes Care Consulting and Ageless Grace doing so much research on the body and the brain and what the body and brain needs uh, to be able to be at its most highly functional. And of course, you already know this, that the body needs to be highly functional and the brain needs to be highly functional because they're all part of who we are. Um, and so if the brain isn't functioning well or the body isn't functioning well, then we're gonna have a challenging time in our lives and we don't want that. Uh, the ideal of course is for all of us to have pleasure and comfort and joy uh, in a simple, easy way that's manageable without depriving ourselves or punishing ourselves. And so that's a lot of what this program is about. So I am Denise Medved, you can see my name on the screen, and I am the creator and founder of the Ageless Grace Brain Health Program, and I will introduce myself in a second, but first I'd like Sherry to introduce herself, uh, who is with uh, the founder and creator of Diabetes Care Consulting. Thank you so much, Denise, and thank everybody today for being here with us. We are so excited to launch this new program and to share the information with you. So, um, Again, my name is Sherry Keating, and I am the founder of Diabetes Care Consulting. So I've, I'm a registered nurse and have been in the field for uh, almost 40 years, and I've specialized in diabetes and chronic disease management. So um, I am certified in diabetes uh, care and education in dementia, as well as diabetes prevention, and I'm also a certified Ageless Grace educator. So <laughs> I'm excited to be here and partner with Denise. She is phenomenal. And it's just been a pleasure to um, put this program together for you and make a difference in the brain health of millions of people. So thank you, Denise. You're welcome. And I uh, am the creator and founder of the Ageless Grace Brain Health Program. And it blows my own mind to say this, but the program launched um, in uh, January of 2011. And of course I worked on it for almost eight years before that, doing research and uh, doing different programs that were pilot programs to see how uh, each one of the tools of Ageless Grace would work and if, how people responded to them and what the results were. And um, so I have been doing this since 2011 officially. Uh, before that, it was a passion to discover what activated the brain, what stimulated neuroplasticity, our ability to change our own brain and central nervous system, um, and what physical movements would activate all five primary functions of the brain. So that's going to be 12 years this month. Holy moly. I can't believe it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hooray. Hooray. Uh, and many of you are Ageless Grace educators um, who are either here live or who are going to be watching this. And I just thank you for your contributions because in everything that Sherry and I do, the last almost two years has been critically important to sharing this work maybe more than ever because so many of us have been isolated, have been uh, taking care of a family member who have uh, been able to uh, to work with their family only on Zoom and not in person. I mean, there's so many challenges that we've all faced and many of us have lost people that we love. And so um, it's really important right now to take good care of yourself, to make a commitment to yourself. And we are here because we want to change the language of what we typically talk about in January. Most of us now don't cringe when I say this, uh, talk about the words diet and exercise. And we say, oh, it's January. I'm gonna start on this new diet and I'm gonna stop doing this and stop doing that and stop doing this and start doing that. And you don't need to raise your hands, please don't. Uh, but I know for a fact that almost every New Year's resolution is broken uh, fairly quickly, usually within the first three months of the year, if not long before that in the first three weeks. So what we're hoping to do with this program and one of the ways that we've designed it is sort of two 
twofold. One, we'd like to help you replace that language of failure, negativity, bad experiences with uh, diet and exercise with words like um, nourishment. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing to do for yourself or movement? We all move every day, but conscious movement is a little bit different than just sort of automatic or um, uh, normal everyday movement. So we would like to really help people discover that one step at a time, and that's the second part of this program, one step at a time, you can start to incorporate better nourishment choices into your life. And one step at a time, you can start to incorporate better movement purposes and choices into your life. And so those things can literally change your life. Unfortunately, our culture is fast, fast, do it now. Let's make it happen. Let's take a pill. Let's change it by next week. And that's not real life. You already know that already, that change takes time. It's a choice, first of all, and then you have to be patient. You have to say, I'm going to make this one change. Ah, I'm doing pretty well at that. Let's make this second change. Let's make this third change. And so that's really and truly what this program is all about, is helping you make positive changes for the better and supporting you with it by uh, the support materials that we've created to go along with this program. So the first part or one of the parts, there's really no first or second, they go hand in hand, the, the nourishment part and the movement part. But since the movement's my part, I'll talk <laughs> about that first, um, that we tend to think that we really have to punish ourselves. And we even use words like work out, or we use no pain, no gain, push a little harder, give me more. Those have been the language of exercise in most of our lives for a long time. So what I would like you to understand and know is that what we're really all about is functional movement. All of us want to be able to do what we need to do without struggling or without feeling like we're challenged physically. But more importantly, maybe than what we need to do is we all want to do what we want to do, what makes us happy, what gives us joy, what gives us pleasure. And so needless to say, if we are not able to move in the way that we want and maybe reach down and get something out of the floor, or do something with their grandkids or maybe our adult children or whatever it is in our lives that we would like to do. Maybe we love to be out in nature. Maybe we like to hike, whatever it is, your body and your brain need to be in good functioning order to be able to enjoy those pleasures. And those are the pleasures of life. We all use language like, well, next Monday, I'm going to start this, or next month on the first, I'm going to start this, or after my child goes to college, I'm going to start this. Why? Why? Because you can make choices day to day for simple, easy movements that cause your body to stay functional and able to do what it needs to do. And you can do the same things with nourishment. And I'm going to let Sherry talk about that a little bit. Oh, Denise, you are so right on all of those points. And so when we add nourishment to movement, we really are creating a lifelong brain health and fitness. We want our brains to operate. Uh, as long as we are alive and we want it to operate optimally and we want to prevent cognitive aging. So um, what I want to share with you about nourishment is that we know that Alzheimer's disease is a disease that all of us are impacted by, right? Uh, my dad passed away from Alzheimer's disease. We know that we have 6 million people right now with Alzheimer's disease, but we also know that it's going to double by the year 2050. We also know that our brain ages and there are, and it ages just like the body does. And so what we can do is they have found that lifestyle choices, including nourishment, and that's a huge choice, it will totally impact brain aging and your risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So my part on the nourishment, what I want you to know is that there are, there's research out there that there's three main eating styles that can improve your brain health. 
And there's one um, study out there that actually shows that if you eat certain foods at a certain amount of servings per week, you can literally have an, a brain that is seven and a half years younger. Did you hear that, guys? Seven and a half years younger by just eating the right foods. Think about this. You go to the gas station and you put the best fuel in your car because you want your car to run optimally. Well, your brain needs optimal fuel. It works 24 seven. You need to nourish it with the best fuel that you can get. And food, there are certain foods that provide the nourishment that the brain functions optimally and it will uh, prevent brain aging and lower your risk of dementia. So, you know, I really wanna talk to you in depth in this program about those foods and help you to start your brain healthy journey with nourishment. And Denise will help you with your brain healthy journey through movement. And you will be able to go on this journey and we're gonna give you a lot of education that you can turn into action. Cause I'm all about education turned into action. What I believe is, you know what? Education is amazing. I've been doing it for almost 40 years as a nurse. But what I have learned is the people that live longer, healthier, and happier are the ones that actually take the education and they do something with it right now. And so I'm all about small steps, significant health rewards. So we're going to give you the tools, the strategies, the education, and then you're going to be able to turn it into action immediately. And you're going to have a brain that's fueled with the proper food. You're going to be able to do the movement that's going to keep your brain healthy. So we're really excited about this. And I hope that it excites you guys too. Um, thank you, Sherry. This has been a really exciting project. We've been working for months on this, as you can imagine. And it's been really exciting to me because I always... I'm so passionate about Ageless Grace and age of all of you who know me know that because I know how you can affect the five primary functions of the brain by physical movement. And it's so simple and easy and fun and it causes you to laugh and it's childlike. It's like play. Like, why wouldn't we do this? Uh, it's so easy. And we've studied that it can even be 10 minutes a day and you would be amazed at what 10 minutes a day can do to make your brain sharper clearer you can have better attention span you can be have more concentration and it can communicate more quickly with your body so that you can do the three r's of ageless grace respond react and recover however the part that's always been missing from ageless grace is the nourishment part because the brain only needs a few things to actually be alive i'm not even talking about functioning at its best i'm talking about staying alive that is oxygen breathing that is sleep and of course we know that movement and food has everything to do with our sleep when we don't eat the right things or eat them at the wrong times of day or when we exercise too late or don't exercise at all we affect our sleep same thing with oxygen and breathing next thing is water same thing when you move and exercise or when you eat certain foods, you automatically start to drink more water and your brain needs those things to be alive. Well, then it needs fuel and that is nourishment. That's the food that we put on our plate and the food that we put in our mouth. So I am so excited about the concept that we have married these two things in nourishment and movement. And we have not only a plan um, and an outline, but we have a booklet, a 50 page booklet uh, that we have put together that will go to the people who sign up for this seminar and really learn this information. As Sherry said, education, we're gonna educate you about it, but then the booklet is your tool to put it into action, to be able to make small changes a little at a time in both nourishment and movement and literally change your life, start to make them habits, start to make them part of the way that you live. Um, so one of the reasons like, why would you want to do this? First of all, my question is, why would you not want to do this if it's something that could be really easy and simple and change your life and improve your brain health? But why would you want to do it? Well, my why, like Sherry, is my mother had Alzheimer's and that's what took her life, except unfortunately, she was here for 10 or 11 years before she passed from Alzheimer's. And it is a, a dreadful, heartbreaking disease when it is in 
the life of someone that you love. Suddenly that person becomes someone else. And most of you know that my mom was a brainiac. She studied all the time. She did crossword puzzles. She did word games. She taught classes. She took courses. She read books, uh, but she did not exercise or move. And we do know that the brain's primary reason for even being in our bodies is to control movement. And then there was my dad who was a uh, spoke English as a second language, didn't like to read, didn't like to study, didn't do crossword puzzles or games like that, but he loved to exercise. He did gymnastics and he did bodybuilding and no kidding. He was Mr. Best Back in Abdominals and Mr. American, Mr. Universe. Um, and he was sharp as a tack up until the moment he died. It was amazing how sharp he was and how bright. And it's because he constantly was moving. And because he liked to move, he also ate really well. And then my mom, who was so smart, so intelligent, but hated to move, didn't like exercise and didn't eat very healthily, uh, struggled those last 11 years of her life with a cognitive diagnosis. Now you also know there are many diagnoses, not just Alzheimer's, but that's the most prevalent one as Sherry pointed out in our world today. Uh, there's there's all kinds of dementias. There are Parkinson's, which is a neurological disease which affects the brain. There are so many things now and they're learning more and more every day of what kinds of cognitive de decline there there are. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Sherry to talk about her why. But before that, I want to point out something that's really important. Until fairly recently, the number one health concern globally, all over the world, all ages, 20 somethings, 90 somethings, was heart disease and cancer. Everybody was like, oh, I don't want to get cancer. It's in my family. Oh, heart disease runs in my family. Well, guess what? Now, the number one concern all over the world among all ages, not just older people, is the fear of losing cognitive function as we age. And the sad part is, is there's something we can do about it. We can do something that affects our cognitive function, both by what we put in our mouth and by how we move our bodies. Sherry, tell us about your why a little bit. Oh, so my why, well, as I told you, my dad died of Alzheimer's. He really had multi-systems atrophy and that affects all of the body systems. And so he ended up having confusion, hallucinations. Uh, he didn't remember who we were. Um, he had a lot of uh, cognitive changes and um, ended up having some dementia and Alzheimer's at the end. So uh, definitely I saw, my dad was an army sergeant, big, strong man in control. And at the end, he couldn't even take care of his own activities of daily living. And so, you know, for me watching that process and having him die in my arms of this disease, I want to make an impact in people's lives and prevent other people from having to go through uh, what our family went through and many other families do. And my other why is I'm a terminal cancer survivor. I had six months to live. I know your health is your greatest wealth. And so I have made it my mission to help people to learn to um, reduce their risk of not only um, chronic disease in their body, but improve their brain health. So, um, you know, I learned... Not that I didn't know before, but when you have a terminal cancer diagnosis, your health becomes critical. And I've worked really hard in the last 13 years since I've been in remission to really know what I'm putting in my mouth, fueling my body with the best nutrients that I can, because I do want to live a long, healthier, happier life. And I know that what nourishment and movement are, are total keys to that success. So, you know, my why is, is two purposes, my terminal cancer personal story and then my, my dad and what I've seen in 39 years working as a nurse. So in the field, um, so I know that all of you have a why too. That's Denise's and my why's. And I always tell people, this is what I believe. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a why and your why can change your story and you can live longer, healthier and happier lives and you can impact the lives of those you love and care for. So I'm sure that you have a why that will will speak to you in terms of the value of this program. 
So um, what we'd like to do is open it up to questions for the next five minutes. And the way we'd like to do that, rather than having people unmute themselves, is to go down at the bottom where it says reactions and it says raise hand. That's one of the choices and raise your hands and then we'll call on you one at a time in the order that you raised your hand so you can ask your questions. And there was one good question in typed into the chat box already. And, and if you don't want to raise your hand and actually talk, you're welcome to type it into the chat box. That's okay too. Uh, one was, does this program uh, promote eating meat? Well, that's one of the choices in the in the diet plan because everybody's different. Some people want and need to incorporate uh, meat in there, and of course, there's different kinds of meat. There's there's red meat, white meat, and fish, and seafood, and so. It is choices and it's part of the choices in the program, but no, it does not promote it and or require it. It actually limits uh, red meat actually, and does promote seafood um, and chicken. So, um, but uh, red meat are one of those um, types of meats that actually potentially damage the brain if you're having it too often. So the, the, the it's very interesting, the nourishment for, brain health is not like an all or nothing diet, you know, it's not, there's so many diets out there, but this is something that is sustainable and something that you can definitely incorporate. And it's realistic. It's not, it's not say, it's not restrictive, but it gives you specific from the science and research specific foods and how often you should eat them. And then specific foods, how often you should eat them and limit their amount because it can be potentially damaging. So um, meat, red meat, you can eat, but it is to be limited. So to answer the question about the meat. Okay. And Donna has her hand up. So Donna, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask us a question. Hi, I was just um, interested to know how long does the program run? Is it live or is it a um, recorded self-study type of program? It's a, it's a one-time seminar, two and a half hours. And with that, you get the book to carry on yourself and start to do it step by step. We're giving you the information, the background, the how, and then you get the booklet or book uh, that's gonna walk you through it. It's simple, it's clear. Even the booklet is, um, it's bullet points. It's it's something that easily that you can follow. It's short quotes. It's not like, re, I gotta read this book to be able to do it. It's more like a reminder of everything everything that you learn in the seminar. And it's interactive. So there's pages that you can, when you're taking the course, there's after each section, there's pages that you can do personal notes to start formulating your own personal plan. And there's a 21 day challenge in there with a calendar. So that when, when we're turning that education into action, there's this 21 day challenge that you can enter to start incorporating now, because it's really about starting today, right? Why wait till tomorrow? Why wait till two weeks from now? Start today, right? Make those small changes. So it helps you to stay on track, stay focused, and it gives you an ability. So this is more of an interactive workbook with tools and education and the 21 day challenge in the calendar. So you can mark your, your progress and see the changes. And so, so that will be helpful. And it also has in it, you know, a list of the 21 tools for exercise and movement. Again, I use the word exercise just to remind you that's what I'm talking about. Um, and those of you who have done Ageless Grace before know that it's done seated. And I'd like to remind you that we're, we have a conditioning response to seated. We think that that's for people who are frail, or have poor balance, or um, I don't know, there, I mean, there's many reasons why we think of someone being seated. We also use language like, I'm going to sit down and rest. I'm going to sit down and take a load off my feet. I'm going to sit down and read the newspaper or eat or watch TV. So we always associate being seated with some kind of, of less than standing, but that's actually not true. For any of you who've ever done Pilates or yoga or any other kind of core work, the core work is always done seated on a ball, on a reformer, on a mat in the floor. So this is a lot of core work, which is 
guess what? Stimulating the spine and the central nervous system. So the whole idea of being seated is that the brain is immediately engaged when we ask you to pretend to do and act out things that you would normally do standing. So this is so simple. I have taught this program to people in wheelchairs. I've taught it to people who've had strokes. I've taught it to triathletes and marathon runners. I've taught it to children. Anyone with a brain uh, can do this program and they can be successful at it and they can make a real difference in their lives. And I am not kidding you. It's not a sales pitch. 10 minutes a day is actually, which would be 70 minutes a week, is actually better than doing 70 minutes once a week. And you think, oh, I'm going to do this big workout. But see, that's another mindset. We think we have to go to the gym or work out for a solid hour and perspire and sweat. And that is not about functional fitness. That will train you for something. If you're going to run a marathon, then you better be doing some real serious workouts. But if what you want to do is be able to walk up three or four steps or be able to bend down and pick something up out of the floor or be able to step up on a step ladder that's got two steps without worrying about falling, then what you want is functional fitness. And that requires a good dialogue between the brain and the body. There's no other way to get it. And so that's what this program does. And so the same thing with nourishment. Um, you can you can go on any kind of diet, but that's um, it's a, a negative type thing. It's it's deprivation. It's setting yourself up to somehow turn a switch overnight and now you're not going to eat these foods anymore. And needless to say, we all know from either personal experience or reading or watching other people that diets that are diets like that don't work, that sudden change. We have to choose to make small changes and that's what makes a difference. Um, does anyone have any other questions? There is actually a couple. One is, is this only for our personal use? Do we or can we incorporate into our Ageless Grace classes? And then the other one is the program able to be shared with others or just for our own use? So they're kind of the same. So Denise, would you like to answer those? Okay, sure. This is really for your own use as opposed to taking something that's been created and teaching it to someone else. It's one thing if you share it with your family, but it's to change your lifestyle. Um, it, we, we don't, I mean, it would be something that you needed to be trained in for a long time in order to share it uh, as a program that you're teaching to change others. Now you can certainly share tidbits of it, meaning like what I just said about water and oxygen and sleep and choosing things like those types of things, but to actually actually teach it as a program uh, is not what this is designed for. It's designed for your lifestyle or the lifestyle of you and your family and your loved ones. And Donna now, wants to know, uh, sorry, Denise, another question. Uh, she has to leave Donna, but will we receive another email with more information on how to register for the program? I can actually put the flyer in the chat to register and I can do that right now. Um, and then did, did everyone, is everyone going to get the link to register for the program? Yes, everybody's going to get the recorded link. Um, and so we'll be sure when you get this follow-up email that has this recording in it, because a lot of people signed up who couldn't be here today, uh, then you can, we'll also have the link in there where you go to register. And we are running a promotion because this is brand new. I mean, we, we know what we're doing. We've researched it for months and months and really kind of all of our lives, um, but we're launching it. And so for those people who uh, jump aboard and will get to, to incorporate this in their lives, we're offering it for $99 uh, for the two and a half hour center and the book. And so uh, after this, uh, pardon me, January 26th, uh, it's going to go up to the regular price, which will be $149. And that will include the book and the seminar, et cetera. But so now's the time to sign up, sign up before the 26th. Um, and, and you have two options. There's, there's a daytime uh, two and a half hour seminar and there's an evening two and a half hour seminar. And that's Eastern time I'm talking about. So that way it allows people who are perhaps in New Zealand or Ireland or other places to be able to sign up at a time that works best for them. Um, and of course that's true of people in California or wherever. But um, I think you'll be, 
delighted with uh, the information that you'll receive and uh, the, the ways that you can incorporate it into your life as just a new choice for a healthy brain and a healthy life because you have a healthy brain. Well, I think we have uh, answered everybody's questions and given you all the information. And we thank you all for being here. And you will get an email with this recorded link in it. It might go out tonight, but probably tomorrow. And we will um, uh, uh, hope to see you on the, one of the two seminars that we're gonna be doing uh, for this program. Thanks for being here. Uh, Sherry has a quote to end with. Yes, I would like to uh, share my favorite quote with you. And um, this is John Maxwell, and this is what I live by. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. So it's really about those small things that we do every single day. So um, let's start by making a commitment to learn this information and then turn it into action so we have lifelong brain health. Thank you all so much for being here from all over the world. Yeah, as it turns thank out. you. So glad to have you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.